the Umbrella Academy is back, and boy did it come back with a bang. This exhilarating piece of television had a lot to live up to with the first season being a smash hit and introducing us to seven new heroes that we had enter our lives. The superhero world can feel very saturated sometimes, but could the Umbrella Academy season two live up to the first and prove itself as a contender in a world where heroes are loved? Well, let's find out. Before I go ahead, make sure you go over to my Twitter, at BrainPilot underscore, and tweet me what show or movie you'd like me to review next. So without further ado, I'm BrainPilot, and here is a review of The Umbrella Academy Season 2. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers, so watch with caution. The Story the story opens up with each individual sibling being dropped into a different time period in Dallas, Texas, with the revelation of an apocalypse occurring 10 days from the moment that the final sibling, number 5, arrives. Off the bat, I thought this was a really good way of continuing the story on from the first season. The fact that they thought they managed to escape the apocalypse in season 1, but were in fact wrong, provided the humour that I thought the season would have. Also, the elongated opening sequence was absolutely amazing to watch. Seeing how each individual character had progressed in the few years that they'd been in Dallas was interesting and funny to see, especially when you see how Klaus had become a cult leader. I thought the characters stayed true to who they were in Season 1, and each moved forward and developed in an organic way. We still saw the majority of the issues that they have with their father Reginald buried deep within them, and it impacts their behaviour on a momental basis as we watched everything unfold. I feel as though the story was paced really well, and at points where you thought the story could resolve, something would happen, such as not all family members making it to the alley in time to return home. And then it would make the extra episode or two feel valid, important, entertaining, and vital to the developing plot. We saw a family that were all separated due to Vanya, re-separated thanks to Five, but then brought back together and were prepared to leave their lives that they'd formed for themselves in the 1960s. The story had its dark, comical humour and tone that makes it stand out when compared to a lot of other shows on the platform and in the superhero world. We see a world that feels all too real, but has these extraordinary people among it and all have issues that we can relate to. It doesn't feel like it caters for a family audience, and I think that's one key difference. I think the soundtrack was very well suited to the show, and really evoked the right mood and emotions from the viewer when connecting to the scene that we were watching unfold. For example, the version of Adele's Hello as the Swedes were sending off their brother, starting with the soft piano as Vanya walked away from the farm during the intro, then the lyric Hello as the camera pans up to the sky followed by a burning arrow descending into the boat containing the Swede's brother, all climaxing to the harrowing scream from the brother as he misses him, just as the chorus and the most powerful part of the song occurs. That moment for me was one of the standout moments in the entire show, just purely down to the song choice, the performance by the cast, and the expressions on the Swede's face. It was perfect. And that's just one occasion of how the music impacted the scene. This occurred many times, and I can't think of a bad representation that they had. All of the songs were very well chosen. As the story unfolded, the revelation that Vanya was always going to be the bomb that caused the apocalypse was something that I thought was a good reveal. She's purely that powerful, and she's far superior to all of them. She did it in 2019, and she almost did it again in the 60s. Her powers are almost too powerful for her. I thought the inclusion of the character Lila was great, and the show needed somebody like that who kept them on their feet. A conflicted character that was loyal to her mother, but has a connection to the enemy in her family's eyes. As much as I liked her, I did think it was slightly obvious that she was in fact a sibling that Reginald didn't take on that magical day. When the reveal did happen, I wasn't necessarily as shocked as what the writers would have wanted me to be. One thing in the story that I thought was quite interesting this season was that we didn't really see the family use their powers that much. 
For example, we rarely saw Klaus, Diego and Luther use their powers. It's a show where you connect with the characters, learn of their struggles and get behind them and want them to succeed. The story is far greater than just the powers that the family have, but it's about the development of the characters and the individual battles that they face. The ending is something that I thought was amazing. The final episode was truly something special. The whole ending, but more specifically the final 30 minutes. When we see the commission from all over time appear and take on the Umbrella Academy, it had an endgame feel where everything was at stake and you didn't see how the family would triumph. However, when Vanya came out and wiped them all out in a breeze, it was 3.30am but I was cheering and shouting for joy. This is then when we saw Lila's full potential, which is something that I didn't expect. I thought she'd have powers, but not to that extent. Once all of that had unfolded, we then saw Five travel back in time by a couple of seconds and contribute to the defeat of the Handler. It was a great moment, especially when the Swede came in and they both called it quits, because they've lost enough and were sick of the conflict. It was a moment that felt so true, relevant, and real. The final few minutes I did think were humorous and gripping, and it felt like the show did come to a good resolution, for the season at least. But my critique is I don't feel as though those final few seconds quite hit the mark like they did with season one. I'm really intrigued to see the Sparrow Academy and see exactly what they are and how they came to be. But the final scene in season one left me a little more gripped and jaw wide open with shock and anger because I had to wait a year and a half for season two and I didn't know what to expect. The story in season two was gripping, humorous, dark, entertaining, exciting, nail biting and quite frankly, I felt like I didn't want it to end. There are amazing characters and actors that really do allow the story to develop in front of our eyes and I can't wait to see what story will be a part of season three. The characters. The cast and characters in the show are perfectly chosen. They bring the show to life and really make the show what it is. Luther. Luther is one of my favorite characters. Despite his size, he can be funny, stupid, and very sensitive. We saw him battle with the issues that he has with his father and also the confliction that he had in loving Alison. He's a tough guy and I enjoy watching him when he's in a fight, knowing that he'll always win. Diego Diego is a character that I really enjoyed watching in season two. I didn't feel he was given enough responsibility in season one. And this season, I really felt like I got to see more of the character and his full potential. His place within the family and also his relationship with Lila, he felt like more of a supporting role in season one. But with the first half of the season being focused around him and also seeing him embark off to the commission really showed that he's a responsible character that deserved the recognition that he got this season. I was getting a little frustrated with how heavily he was obsessed with the Kennedy situation, but I understand it needed to be there for the story to develop. Klaus Klaus is the character that makes me laugh out loud when on screen. He's so ridiculous and animated yet has a real serious side that allows him to not just be the comic relief. He's the caring one in the family and really does tie a lot of them together. I've been a fan of Robert since he was in the Channel 4 show Misfits. He's great. Allison. Allison, like Diego, is a character that I feel got more exposure in season two and got to carry certain episodes and tackle difficult issues. I enjoyed watching her use her powers on the man in the diner and also seeing the life that she managed to build despite being there due to being dropped out of the blue. Number five. Number five is easily my favorite character in the entirety of the show, not just this season. I find it hard to believe that Aiden is only 16 years old. He acts like he's a seasoned actor and has had years of experience. I love the fact that he's the youngest, yet he keeps them all together. And although Luther thinks he's the leader, number five really is. I also think that number five's power is definitely one of the best, and I think that adds to it as well. I enjoy seeing his relationship with the handler and just how experienced and confident he is, despite visually only being a child. Whenever he's on screen, I know I'm going to enjoy the moment. Ben. 
Ben is a character that still we've only had a taste of, and I think the Ben that we're going to see in Season 3 is going to be very different to the one that we've come to learn about. He provided an emotional sad moment when we saw him sacrifice himself to save his siblings, and I think that's a good insight as to what the character will be like. Vanya Vanya is most probably the most annoying character in the show. I do like her, but I feel she can just be really whiny and annoying at points. I don't think she was as bad as what she was in Season 1, but there were still elements of the annoyance that were coming through. I think her power is great, and we got to see her learn a little more control and remember everything that happened in Season 1, but I do feel she is my least favourite sibling. The Handler I'm a fan of The Handler. I didn't think that we'd see her again this season, but seeing her manipulative front always has you questioning what she's saying and if it's true or not. I especially liked her relationship with Five as I never know what she truly thinks of him. It was interesting to see that she was going to repeat the same cycle as what she did with Lila, but with Harlan. And also, I only realized that it's Hannah Baker's mum from 13 Reasons Why as well. I think she's the perfect casting for the role and it was great watching her. The Swedes The Swedes were a great inclusion to this season. The emotionless, almost robotic hardcore killers were a pleasure to watch on screen. As weird as that sounds. Although no words, they had to work twice as hard, as it was all physical and facial expressions. They definitely delivered. At the start of the season, I didn't really like them that much due to the fact that they felt too forced. But then when I saw a consistent mood, attitude and portrayal, they became believable and enjoyable to watch. It's a shame that the remaining Swede most likely won't return in Season 3. But hey, it looks as though he's off to join the cult that Klaus founded. Lila Lila was an interesting character. I feel as though at the start I didn't think that she'd be who she was. But early on, it became clear that she did have some powers of some sort. Her relationship with Diego was critical for the story and I thought that it worked well in the show. It provided the conflict in where her loyalties lied, and that was a big thing for her. I definitely think she will return in Season 3, and I look forward to seeing her again. After all, doesn't that make her number 8? Final Thoughts Overall, I would say that Season 2 outperformed Season 1 of the show, and I didn't think that it would be able to do that. It's shot in a way that's so easy on the eye and provides a glossy tone to this dark character piece among seven siblings. It has me continuously watching these seven family members that I've grown to enjoy watching on my screen and I want to see more of. I have my predictions for season three and I'm looking forward to seeing just what the family will get up to. Now it seems that they've more than altered the timeline in the present day. So, there you have it. What I think of Season 2 of The Umbrella Academy. What did you think of Season 2 of the show? Did you enjoy it? Leave a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time. <laughs>